in this problem solving session number 3 we are going to solve some problems related to quantum gates or quantum circuits and entanglement sweeping and measurement as a first problem we are asked to find out the output of this uh, find out the output of this quantum circuit and in this circuit a hadamard gate followed by a c not gate is given and the inputs of the quantum circuits are q1 is equal to k1 and q2 is equal to uh, k1 in the first channel the input is k1 and uh, in the second channel input is again k1 so we know if the input to a hadamard gate is k1 then at the output we get the uh, output as k0 minus k1 by root 2 just recall that when the input is k0 at the output of the hadamard gate we obtain k0 plus k1 by root 2 we get a superposition state now this particular output is going to be the input of the c0 gate now in the c0 gate we have in the first channel this is our input in the first channel and in the second channel we are having the output input as k1 now as per the rule of you know c not get operation uh, this is my control if the control this is my control and this is my target if the control is zero then the target remains unchanged target remains unchanged on the other hand i'm talking about c not get operation rule and if the control is get one if control is one then target gets flipped right target gets flipped so in this case the output would be your if control is zero the target here is one so it is going to remain unaffected it would remain same if the control is one the target is going to get uh, flipped so it will become zero so therefore at the output of this circuit we are going to get this as our state so this is the answer let us now work out this problem this problem is on entanglement sweeping and i have discussed entanglement sweeping in lecture eight however i have uh, skip certain calculation steps and intention of this particular problem is to fill up those gaps in this problem uh, what is asked is this ellis and bob share entangled state phi plus uh, which is a superposition state of uh, 0 0 plus 1 1 by root 2 on the other hand ellis and charlie share the entangled state phi plus again that is 0 0 plus 1 1 by root 2 using the entanglement sweeping protocol as discussed in lecture 8 you are asked to show that if ellis measurement outcome of her two qubits is 0 0 then bob and charlie share share the entangled pair phi plus uh, let us uh, work it out so it involves very simple calculation so ellis and bob share this entangled state phi plus that is equal to 0 0 plus 1 1 by root 2 here the first qubit belongs to ellis and the second qubit belongs to bob so this is phi plus shared by ellis and bob similarly here one belongs to ellis and this belongs to bob on the other hand the similar entangled state is shared by ellis and charlie as well which is k 0 0 plus k 1 1 by root 2 first qubit belongs to ellis second qubit belongs to charlie first qubit here belongs to ellis second qubit belongs to charlie now the resulting state as we already discussed in lecture 8 the resulting state 
where the first two qubit is belonging to Ellis can be written in this form A A B C. First two qubits belong to Ellis, and the second two qubits belong to Bob and Charlie respectively. Zero zero belongs to Ellis, and then zero zero. So this way I can write all other possibilities. Zero one belongs to Ellis. Zero one here. This belongs to Bob. This belongs to Charlie. And then we have one zero belonging to uh, Ellis and one zero belonging to Bob and Charlie. And finally, we have one one belonging to Ellis, first two qubits, and the other two belonging to Bob and Charlie, respectively. Right, so this is basically the resultant state. Now, Ellis measurement outcome as given, Ellis measurement outcome is outcome of hard qubits her qubits is zero zero so therefore ellis is using the measurement operator m0 is phi plus phi plus a a so she can make measurement on her qubits only and bob and charlie's qubit remaining uh, untouched uh, ellis cannot do anything about that now because of this measurement the state uh, psi a a b c this state collapses to from measurement uh, problem chapter we know uh, that lesson we have already learned that this collapses to uh, the state given by this expression m0 psi a a b c divided by square root of p of 0 uh, here p of 0 as we know is the probability probability of getting the outcome getting the outcome 0 0 and in fact mathematically we can write p of 0 is equal to expectation value of the measurement operators m0 bar dagger m0 psi a a b c this already we know now we have to do the detail calculations firstly let us calculate m0 dagger m0 which is phi a a phi plus a a bra phi plus a a uh, this is m0 dagger is equal to actually m0 so this is m0 is phi plus a a bra phi plus a a let me now open it up uh, because this is nothing but phi plus a a phi plus a a if i oh, this is exactly equal to m0 right so let me now open it up i have phi 0 plus is k 0 0 plus k to 1 1 and the other one is again because 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 becomes half and here i have 0 0 plus 1 1 and the total would be half if i open it up 0 0 uh, I will have 0, 0, 1, 1 plus 1, 1, 0, 0, as you can see easily, 1, 1, 1, 1, right? This is what I will have. Now, if this guy operates M0, dagger M0, operates on psi A, A, B, C, which is equivalent to operation of M0 on psi A, A, B, C, let me work it out m0 this would be equal to m0 is half let me write everything 0 0 
plus zero zero one one plus uh, one one zero zero plus one 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 okay so this is operating on the state half psi a a b b let me write everything so that uh, you can easily follow it a a this 0 0 b c plus 0 1 a a uh, you will have 0 1 b c plus 1 0 a a tensor product with 1 0 b c actually i should uh, it's not outer product it's direct product so let me be careful here this is k 0 0 and similarly here this is k 0 1 this is k 0 1 and here also it should be k 1 0 plus 1 1 a a tensor product with 1 1 b c i think these calculations all of you can uh, do it very simply and now what you will get this is going to give me a half let me write uh, these things you will get half zero 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 i'm writing in short end notation a a b c plus zero zero one one a a b c plus one one zero zero a a b c right plus one 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 a a b c okay so this is uh, what i will get and this i can actually write in a product form it would be one by root two I can write 0 0 a a plus 0 1 a a uh, it is not 0 1 it would be 1 1 a a 1 1 a a tensor product with 1 by root 2 0 0 b c plus 1 1 a a right a a b c sorry it should be b c this should be b c as you can see this is nothing but the bell state belonging to bob and charlie and that's why it is clear that bob and this basically implies that bob and charlie bob and charlie share the entangle pair entangle pair phi plus because of the measurement of ellis who, who got the outcome as zero zero so this is how we have proved it let us now work out this uh, problem actually here i intend to explain you again why entanglement does not allow instant communication between two parties i have already explained it in lecture number eight however let me do it again in a little bit uh, simpler way though i cannot avoid mathematics uh, so let us say though it is not solution let me write solution let us say ellis and bob make measurement in a system s belonging to the hilbert space h uh, where h a h is a direct product or tensor product of the hilbert space of ellis and bob respectively now the state of the composite system is given by density operator in the hilbert space h as we know and any density operator rho is a sum of the form say a i that is belonging to the linear operator belonging to the hilbert space h a and b i belonging to the 
uh, Hilbert space. It's an operator belonging to the Hilbert space as B. Okay. Now, Ellis performs local measurements. So let me write here. Ellis performs local measurements. Local measurement on her subsystem on her sus subsystem uh, of the following kind basically c is going to say use the measurement operator say mk and the hilbert space of bob is going to remain untouched so therefore that's why here i am writing identity and the state is row and here i have mk dagger direct product with ihp this basically means that the hilbert space of uh, bob is not touched and the resultant of this operator is that uh, row is going from because of this measurement row is going from another state row dash so this is going to be my row this now mk are the measurement operators which has to satisfy this particular properties as we know from measurement postulates mk mk dagger should be equal to i h a because here mk is a measurement operator belonging to the hilbert space of ellis and mk tensor product with i h p let me reiterate again this implies that ellis measurement operators operators does not interact does not interact with bob subsystem bob subsystem okay it's a local measurement now say the composite system is prepared in the state row the composite system is composite system system is prepared in row so composite system is prepared in the state row and you have to assume let us assume assume that assume that up immediately after immediately after ellis performs her measurement ellis performs her measurement her measurement okay the relative state of the relative state of bob system bob system is given by the partial trace of the overall state with respect to Ellis system with respect to Ellis system so what I mean by this is that basically to know the state of uh, Bob I am going to trace out uh, Ellis right so I have to trace out Ellis by performing this operation row dash is basically the resultant state of of the system after Ellis make the measurement so row goes to row dash and then I take uh, the partial trace over Ellis basically I'm going to get the uh, reduced density matrix for Bob right that's the intention 
this is what it means so let us work it out now because we know what is rho dash so trace h a let me write what is rho dash rho dash is already i have written here okay this is what my rho dash is let me write it again here that is sum over k m k tensor product with i h p this is rho and m k dagger tensor product with i h p all right so this is what i have now because of the trace operation i can now write again let me write do it step by step i can write k sum over k and let me write sum over i here m k i'm basically replacing rho rho is a summation over a i b i right so that's what i'm going to write m k is going to act on the operator belonging to a list a i and then i have m k dagger uh, bob is going to remain untouched so therefore this is b i so this is what i'll have and in the next step what i can do i can take the trace inside so let me take summation i here summation k traces over ls only so let me write m k a i m k dagger b i all right so then i can write further sum over i trace let me take the summation inside a i sum over k m k m k dagger and i have here b i and we know that measurement operator has to satisfy some properties and this would be identity therefore i will have summation i trace over a i b i and this is basically nothing but trace uh, i have taken over the original state row so what does it mean it means that statistically speaking statistically speaking bob cannot tell bob cannot tell the difference difference between what ellis did and a random measurement and a random measurement or whether c did anything at all or whether ellis did anything at all so this clearly shows that entanglement does not allow instant communication between two parties uh, just one thing i want to make once again clear that it may appear to some of you that uh, i am able to write it as a kind of a product set remember that this is not a product state i am expressing the density operator in terms of linear operators belonging to ellis hilbert space and bob hilbert space that i can always do irrespective of entanglement this is not state i cannot write rho is equal to state of uh, a ellis and state of b this is what i mean by entanglement okay here i can always do that but i cannot do this when the states are entangled okay this has to be clear i think i have made it clear in lecture eight as well let us now work out this problem this problem is related to measurement problem in particular povm positive operator value measures uh, before i do this problem let us revise uh, povms again a little bit quickly so the idea of povm was as follows say you are given a system in a state rho and we want to know uh, a set of operations which can give us the probability say pi where pi is the probability probability of getting the outcome 
getting the outcome i right as we know from density matrices information is always defined by taking the expectation value of uh, of an operator so pi must be of this form we have to take trace over some operator e and density operator is rho so the, our density matrix is rho then we will this is gives us the probability of getting the outcome right now properties of ei uh, this is the operator which is basically the measurement operator and its properties properties of ei are decided by the fact are decided by the fact by the fact that pi should behave like probabilities pi should behave like probabilities probabilities and we know that probability cannot be negative it has to be non-negative uh, for any density operator rho uh, or state the operators ei this implies that ei should be non-negative or should be semi-positive definite semi-positive definite that means it eigenvalues cannot be negative it has to be always positive uh, so this is generally denoted by this expression ei should be always greater than or equal to zero that means this operator ei should be uh, semi-positive definite and another thing is that the total probability should add up to be one and this implies that summation because okay let me write because pi is equal to trace of ei rho and because of this trace operation i can write the trace of product of two operators is equal to trace of ei and trace of rho right this is what i have and trace of rho is equal to one because it's a density operator so this implies that uh, i should have sum over ei is equal to one okay so this is uh, also we must have so therefore povm should obey uh, any povm measurement operators should satisfy these two properties ei should be greater than equal to zero and summation ei is equal to one a set of operators ei satisfying this particular operation or these conditions this set of two conditions are known as povm now let us uh, go back to the problem the problem states that consider the operators m1 is equal to root lambda 0 0 where lambda is lying between 0 and 1 and m2 another measurement operator that is square root of 1 by lambda the matrix form is given 0 0 1 right so this is what is given these two measurement operators are given uh, these two operators are given you have to show that m1 and m2 can be measurement operators we still don't know whether they are measurement operators or not and you have to show it that they are measurement operators for a qubit because it's a two by two matrix of course it has to be uh, it can deal with qubit and the next part of the problem is that say the qubit system is initially in the pure state plus a uh, kth plus uh, is equal to one by root two one one you have to find the outcome probabilities and states after the measurements okay let us uh, work it out so first of all if m1 and m2 has to be measurement operators they have to satisfy this particular uh, uh, you know property they have to be equal to identity this all of us we know as regards measurements are concerned so first let us work out what is m1 dagger m1 
एम ओन डेगर एम ओन एम ओन इज रूट ओभार लेमडा जिरो 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 एज गिवेन सो एम ओन डेगर उड बी एगेन द सेम इट उड बी रूट लेमडा जिरो 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 दिस इज वट आई हेव इफ आई टेक द मेट्रिक्स प्रडक्ट आई उल गेट लेमडा जिरो 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 एज यू कैन सी एंड सिमिलरलि लेटेस्ट वर्क आउट एम टू डेगर एम टू डेट उड बी इक्वेल टू एम टू इज गिवेन एज स्कोर रूट ऑफ वन माइनस लेमडा जिरो जिरो वन एंड इट उड बी एम टू डेगर उड बी वन माइनस स्कोर रूट ऑफ वन माइनस लेमडा जिरो जिरो वन एंड इफ आई टेक द प्रोडक्ट मेट्रिक्स प्रोडक्ट आई उल गेट वन माइनस लेमडा हियर जिरो जिरो वन नाउ लेटस एट डेम एम ओन डेगर एम ओन प्लस एम टू डेगर एम टू इफ आई डू द एडिशन देन आई उल गेट वन जिरो जिरो वन हुई इज नथिंग बट आईडेंटिटी सो दे आर फोर क्लियरली दे सेटिस्फाई दिस वेरी critical property so m1 and m2 can be uh, measurement operators they qualifies to be measurement operator for a qubit because why qubit as i said it is a 2 by 2 matrix now let us discuss the uh, second part of the question it is given that the system is in the state k plus which is 1 by root 2 1 1 so let me write down the corresponding density operator for this state that would be rho is equal to half you have 1 1 1 1 so this will give you a half 1 1 1 1 that's the density operator now what would be the outcome measurement outcome for if i use uh, m1 the first outcome would be p1 is equal to trace Rho m1 dagger m1, okay. So first, let me find out what is rho m1 dagger m1, and we have calculated rho that is half one 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 one. We have found out rho and m1 dagger m1 is nothing but uh, lambda. This already we worked out here. Lambda zero zero zero. Lambda zero zero zero. If I take the multiplication, then I will get half lambda zero lambda zero, or I can write it as lambda by two one zero one zero, and this implies that probability of the first outcome when I have used the measurement operator m one is lambda by two because I have to take the trace. And trace, trace of this implies actually trace of rho m1 dagger m1 is equal to lambda by two as you can see. So the first outcome we have obtained. Now what about the second outcome? Uh, the second outcome we will work out later. But first let us see what would be the state immediately after the measurement uh, of this first outcome. The state would become rho would become uh, as per the measurement postulate or me we have already know it would be m i rho m i dagger by p i. So in this case, we have if I use the measurement operator m one m one rho m one dagger. Let us work it out. M one is root lambda zero zero zero. Rho is half one 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 one, and this would be root m one dagger would be root lambda zero zero. Okay, so if I work out the product matrix product, if I take, I get half lambda zero zero zero. So this is what I will get. Therefore, your rho would become rho des is equal to because of the measurement. P one already we got to be lambda by two, and this we have is half lambda zero zero zero. From here I get the density operator 
as a result of the measurement would be 1000 so effectively this means that i am going from the state uh, initially the system is in the state k plus and after measurement m1 it is go to k0 right by the way this is nothing but k0 if i convert it to state and the density operator basically this is equivalent to this because if you remember k0 is 10 and bra0 is 10 so that's why i am getting this okay so this is my state immediately after the measurement similarly you can show i leave it to you similarly you can show if you follow the same procedure that the probability of the second outcome p2 would be equal to trace of rho m2 dagger m2 and this would be 1 minus lambda by 2 if you work it out and you can also show that the state immediately after the measurement will go to this particular state that would be square root of 1 minus lambda k0 plus k1 divided by square root of 2 minus lambda okay another important point you can note here that until and unless lambda is equal to 1 the state after the measurement will not be a perfect collapse it will you see unlike here in the first measurement your plus k plus is collapsing to k0 but here after measurement k plus when the second measurement m2 is used the k plus is collapsing into a superposition state but if lambda is equal to 1 it will collapse into k1 a, a perfect collapse will happen let us now work out this problem uh, in this problem two operators are given m1 des m2 des Uh, this problem is similar to the one that we have done in the previous one you have to show that m1 des and m2 des can be measurement operators for a qubit then in the second part of the problem the qubit system is initially is in the pure state uh, k plus is equal to 1 by root 2 1 1 you have to find the outcome probability p1 and what will be the corresponding state then you have to comment on the povms m1 des m2 des and m1 m2 of the previous problem let us do it uh, first of all we know that the measurement operators have to satisfy this condition uh, and let us first check whether this is satisfied or not to do that let us first work out m1 dagger m1 des dagger m1 des that would be equal to m1 des is 0 0 root lambda 0 and m1 dagger would be 0 root lambda 0 0 and if i take the matrix product then i am going to get lambda 0 0 0 and m2 des is similar to m2 exactly the same as that of m2 in the previous problem still let me work it out again m2 des is square root of 1 minus lambda 0 0 1 and m1 uh, m2 des dagger would be square root of 1 minus lambda 0 0 1 and if i take the matrix product then i will get 1 minus square root of 1 minus lambda Uh, actually i will get not square root of i will get 1 minus lambda 0 0 1 now if i take the sum of these two m1 des dagger m1 des plus m2 des dagger m2 des that would be equal to 1 0 0 1 unit matrix and thereby we see that m1 des m2 des they are measurement operators are 
मेजरमेंट ऑपरेटर्स मेजरमेंट ऑपरेटर्स नाउ यू सी वन थिंग इज दैट इन द प्रीवियस प्रॉब्लम एम वन एंड एम टू दे वेर पीओ भी एम्स दे कॉन्स्टिट्यूट ए पीओ भी एम एंड सिमिलरली हियर एम वन डेस एंड एम टू डेस ऑल्सो कॉन्स्टिट्यूट ए पीओ भी एम हुएर एम टू इज इक्वल टू एम टू डेस फ्रम द प्रिभिया प्रब्लेम हाउ एवर इन दिस प्रब्लेम एम एम ओवान इज नट इक्वल टू एम ओवान डेस डेगर बट वन थिंग यू कैन सी इज डेट एम ओवान डेगर एम ओवान इज इक्वल टू एम ओवान डेस डेगर एम ओवान डेस एज यू कैन सी if you look at the previous problem as well so therefore uh, we can conclude one thing that m1 m2 and m1 dash m2 dash they constitute the they constitute or they refer to the same pobms however now let us look at the second part of the problem to find out the outcome of the measurement operator m1 dash that would be equal to trace of rho m1 dash dagger m1 dash now rho is equal to is the same as that of the previous problem this would be half 1 1 1 just to have a quick recall that we the state is in uh, k plus which is 1 by root 2 1 1 so therefore rho would be you just have to work it out and you will find that this would be half 1 1 1 1 right this is what you will have now first let me work out rho m1 dash dagger m1 dash this is going to be equal to if you work it out m1 dash dagger m uh, m1 dash already i have it this is this one right so let me just uh, work it out half 1 1 1 1 and this is lambda 0 0 0 and you will get the okay you will get uh, what we got in the last problem so this would be equal to lambda by 2 um and this would be lambda by 2 0 0 so therefore p1 that is equal to trace of rho m1 dash dagger m1 dash this is going to be equal to simply lambda by 2 this is exactly the same that we have obtained with m1 as well so what we see from this is that the outcome of the measurement is the same with the pobms that's the reason i said that m1 m2 from the previous problem and in this problem m1 dash m2 dash they refer to the same pobm however if we talk about the state the state after uh, this um, post measurement state would be given by m1 dash rho m1 dash dagger and divided by p of 1 and let us work out uh, m1 dash dagger this is state after measurement m1 dash so now first let me work out m1 dash rho m1 dash dagger that would be equal to um i have m1 this the m1 is equal to 0 m1 this is equal to 0 0 root lambda 0 and rho is half 1 1 1 1 and m1 dagger is equal to 0 root lambda 0 0 and if i work it out i am going to get half 0 0 0 lambda so post measurement state is post measurement 
state is going to be equal to half 0 0 0 lambda divided by p of 1 and which is lambda by 2 so this is going to give me this is basically your rho dash uh, and rho is going to rho dash and rho dash is equal to 0 0 0 1 and you see that this guy is nothing but k1 bra 1 so this implies that initially my state was at k plus and now after measurement we are getting it to be at k1 this is because of the measurement m1 this uh, and by the way in the previous problem we had uh, the initially the state was also in k plus but after measurement the state goes to k0 uh, this was with the m1 now you see the post measurement though m1 m2 and m1 dash m2 dash refer to the same povm but they give different post measurement results so this is one of the peculiarity of povms uh, in povms we are generally interested in knowing the outcome probability of the outcome but not interested in the post measurement state as a final problem in this session let us work out this uh, problem related to quantum circuits uh, we have to work out the output uh, of this circuit when the input is given as uh, 0 0 this is the input given uh, here so what is going to be the output right just notice one thing that now we are having a inverted c naught gate after the two hadamards where in the first channel this is our target and at the second channel this is the control if you remember that usually the c naught gate is denoted by this symbol where in the first channel we have the control and in the second channel we are having the target however here the opposite thing is there so let us work it out first of all let us see what we are going to get at the output of the two hadamard gate so we have this hadamard gates are there and input is k0 k0 let us find out what is going to be the output at the uh, two hadamards because they are going to uh, act this output is going to act like a input for the inverted c naught gate we know that if k0 is the input for the hadamard gate at the output we are going to get the superposition state k0 plus k1 by root 2 similarly here we will get k0 uh, for the second channel the if the input is k0 the output would be k0 plus k1 by root 2 so therefore uh, you can easily see that uh, at the output of the two hadamard gate we are going to get uh, at the at the output we are going to get the state as k0 plus k1 by root 2 inner product with k0 plus k1 by root 2 this one refer to the first channel this one refer to the second channel so overall we are going to get this bell state that would be 0 0 plus 0 1 plus 1 0 plus 1 1 so this is going to be my output now this output of the hadamard gate will act like a input for the inverted c naught gate so here uh, my input is half k00 plus k01 plus k10 plus k11 right so this is my input to the inverted c naught gate one thing you have to just remember here is that now this first qubit k0 this is is going to act like a target this is my target and this other second qubit is going to act like a control so we know that if the control is zero the target is going to remain unchanged 
and if the control is one the target is going to get you know flipped at the output so here also uh, you have this is your target this is your control this is your target this is your control so obviously at the output you can easily make it out that from this we are going to have k00 but in this case the control is one the target is going to get flipped so we'll get one one and for from this we'll get the target is control is zero so target is not going to get flipped so we'll have one zero and finally if the in the last case uh, if the target is uh, control is one the target is going to get flipped so we'll get zero one so this is going to be my output at the inverted c node gate this also we can write as one by root k0 plus k1 and one by root two k0 plus k1 so this is going to be the final output of the problem so i hope uh, you get it so we can actually design various uh, quantum circuit uh, this way and you can play with it mm -hmm.